Well, good morning. Good morning. It is good to be with you for the worship of God this morning. My name is Aaron. I'm one of the pastors here at Trinity, and it is my privilege to welcome you here today. If you're here all the time, if you bring your smiling face through your through these doors on Sunday mornings to worship God, you know it's always good to see you here. If this is your first time with us today, I want you to know how particularly welcome you are to be here, how glad we are that you have joined us. If you're watching online, welcome to you. We're glad that you're online with us this morning. All of you who who are here for the worship of God with this community of faith today, I want to invite to fill out a connect card. It is an important tool for us here at Trinity to get connected and stay connected. And so whatever information you are willing to provide us to help us do that, we would be so appreciative and you can pass those in later in the service. You know, here at Trinity, there's always a lot going on. There's always things that you can be doing to plug in, uh, to help you grow in your faith, to grow in your love of God, to grow in your love of neighbor. And so I just encourage you again this morning to please uh, read your bulletin. There's lots of great announcements in there of things that are happening in the church. Uh, go online, follow us on all the social media, uh, all those kinds of things to help you know what's going on and to pick those things that are of interest to you. You know, we have a, tr a tradition here at Trinity. We hope that everyone who comes through our doors grows to feel this way about our church. But I say to you this morning, welcome home. Would you please stand and greet one another this morning? Say good morning to someone you don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. So there's that. All right, let's uh, let's let's play music. Let's do something. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. Join us in praising God, singing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see.
Let us pray. Oh God, let that be our prayer this morning. Help us to see you in this hour as we worship, standing shoulder to shoulder together. Reveal yourself to us. Help us to grow closer to one another. Draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to please be seated. Boy, it's a joy to celebrate the, bat- the sacrament of baptism this morning with the Kennard family. We would love to welcome Kyle and Whitney and Hadley, the baptism of Hadley Page, to come forward as well as their family and friends if you would like to come and stand around her. awesome thing it is to have such a wonderful family up here and large family up here supporting you all today as you come to celebrate this baptism. Um, we look forward to the life of faith that is ahead of Hadley and uh, what God will do in her life. So I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you all as parents, Kyle and Whitney. Um, These questions are the traditional questions of faith. Um, They may sound like um, pretty traditional language, but it talks about turning away from all that's evil in the world and working against that and then turning toward Christ and putting our faith in Christ uh, and then how you'll raise Hadley. So I ask you these questions on behalf of the church. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to work against evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And now, will you nurture Hadley in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Now we're going to pray over the water. As Aaron pours it, please pray with me. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Hadley who receives it, to wash away her sin, clothe her in righteousness throughout her life that in dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. Amen. Hadley, Hadley, can I hold you? <gasps> Hello, beautiful. I, I promise I'm not going to hurt you. There's going to be some water, though. Daddy's right there. Daddy's right. Uh, mommy's right there, too. You want to face this way? Oh, look, and there's a bunch of people you don't know, but they love you already. You see them? Do you see the water? See that water? I'm going to use that to baptize you. Are you ready? Hadley Page, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? (laughs) It was, wasn't it? Will you all lay hands on her and then those of the family, if you'll reach towards her, you can hold her, that's fine. Let's lay hands on her. In the congregation, if you'd like to reach a hand forward in blessing as well, you may. Hadley Page, being born of water and the Spirit, may you grow to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
we're going to go ahead and show you off while the congregation responds. Go ahead and come with me. Let me invite you to join me in a response. We welcome you into our family of faith. With God's help, we will support you with active love, Christian education and nurturing, and opportunities to express your faith in mission. May God bless you always. love you so much and so does Jesus. Can't wait to see you grow up in the faith. Congratulations. Yay. What a wonderful thing it is to celebrate the beginning of life and uh, the life of faith of Hadley. As we turn to a time of prayer this morning, I also invite you to remember two families who are mourning the loss of one of the saints. Um, Alan Shepard had been in assisted living for quite a while and was then in hospice care, and Alan passed away last night and wanted to let you all know that. And please uh, pray for Alan and his family. And then also yesterday, we had the service of uh, celebrating the life and resurrection of Bob Garagues, a uh, committed and faithful Christian and part of this congregation for many, many years. And so I invite you to continue to remember his family in your prayers as well. And then also the others uh, who are listed this morning who are a part of uh, Trinity and need your, your prayers and your support. I know that you all have other things that are on your hearts and minds this morning that you want to pray about as well. And so we'll spend a few moments in silent prayer as we all lift up prayers to God. Let's pray. Holy God, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, and we gather this morning to worship you. Some of us come here with enthusiasm and anticipation, some with reluctance, some come with joy, some with sadness, and others even full of fear. Yet we know that you receive us as we are and guide us to be more as you intend for us to be. God of love, we are a people who long to be loving and who often fail. Forgive us when our actions hurt ourselves and others. Forgive us when we do not choose our words with care and then hurt our family, friends, or neighbors. Teach us what it means to truly be a good neighbor and to love our neighbors as ourselves. This morning, we lift our prayers to you for our community and for our neighbors. For those who are sick, bring healing. 
for those who are hungry or homeless or in need. May we surround them with love and support. For those who are lonely or struggle with anxiety or depression, may they know the strength of your embrace. For those who mourn, bring comfort. For those who celebrate new life, may they be filled with joy and anticipation. To all, O God, grant your grace. Touch us with your power and send us back into this community, into our neighborhoods, renewed and eager to do your will with simple acts of love and kindness. Give us patience and show us your way so that we may walk in the paths of goodness, truth, and light. Through your spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Trinity has a ministry on the east side of town. It's called Faith Mission. Many of you may be aware of that. It's a way for us to reach out on the east side of town and be in relationship with those in that neighborhood for the betterment of us all. Ward Simonton is the director of Faith Mission, and he's a part of the Trinity staff. This morning, I invite you to take a look at this video and hear about what we are doing through Faith Mission in the voices of those who are a part of that ministry. Take a look. Good morning. Trinity's ministry at Faith Mission is our mission box today. Faith Mission supports children and youth in wonderful ways. Let's hear from kids, share about the programs they are in. Well, my mentor, he inspires me to do what I want to be, like a football player, he inspires me to do that. Well, um, the thing I like about my mentor is that um, I can like talk to her and I can depend on her and I can like, I can talk to her about things that I can't really talk to nobody else about. You, if you have a mentor, you can depend on them and they'll push you forward. She makes me feel good about myself because she inspired me to do um, great things. And um, she told me about her childhood and it kind of connected to mine. So I get to talk to her about things like that. When I first started, I was about to start with my work and work a lot and then get paid. And But now I think it's more to it than that. You work read, learn, and have fun at the same time. You learn life lessons, you meet up with new people, um, everybody shares an experience that's kind of similar. Well, at LL, I've learned how to, uh, I've learned carpentry, and uh, I've learned like to become a better man to get my own chair, and uh, to respect my mother more. The book is Seven Habits of a Highly Successful Team. It'll help me, like, you know, just stay on task and, like, not goof around the school. And it just showed me how important it is and how much it means to life. Um, my thoughts of um, LOF is, like, really fun and um, inspiring because um, I get to, uh, everybody here at LOF believes in me that I can do great things when I grow up or I can do great things now. Great. Kids Scout make me feel great. I can be myself at Kids Scout. I love the cafe and I feel lucky. Kids Scout helped me with my own. Helping me get ready for third grade. What I like about the volunteers and the tutors are they're very helpful and encouraging. Um, what's your favorite thing about your tutors? And volunteers. That they make me happy. Do they do anything specific to make you happy? Yes. Like what? Like reading, read, reading books to me, um, playing games with me, and and um 
and and helping me do my homework. Kid Scouts make me feel happy. Our goal this year for renovations at Faith Mission is $25,000. Through special giving and your generosity, we have achieved almost half of our goal so far. Thank you very much for your continued support. There are a variety of ways that you can be involved with Kids Count, Smile, and LOF. Please visit the Faith Mission Volunteer Opportunities page at the Trinity website to learn more. Doesn't that just make you want to get involved and be a part of that ministry? For sure. And it's also our mission box for today. And as uh, you heard one of the kids say, their goal is $25,000 toward renovations of those facilities. They're about halfway there. And your generosity this morning through the mission boxes, the wooden boxes that are by each of the exit doors will enable them to reach their goal and to have the facilities to support the powerful and significant ministry that is happening there. You also heard one of the teenage young men talk about learning building skills as well as many other life skills and uh, three of those things that they have made are out underneath the oak tree and I invite you to take a look and maybe take a piece of furniture home with you. Um, there's a silent auction out there and again that goes to support um, directly the, the ministry that we are engaged in on the east side of town through Faith Mission. So thank you for your generosity. You are also generous to Trinity through your regular tithes and offerings, and they go to support all of the ministries of Trinity uh, in our congregation and in the community. And so we thank you for your uh, continued support of those. And I invite you now to bow your heads with me before we receive the offering. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting God, you willingly equip us with love and insight and the resources to meet every challenge in our community. Make us bold to live as Christ's disciples. May the gifts we offer to you, the lives we live for you, the witness we make for you, be a testimony to the love that led Christ to the cross, his precious life given for each of us. And as we leave worship this morning, may our living bear witness to your giving. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. No, 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 no. Good morning. All right. I said make sure you guys are awake still. Um, so uh, my name is Sage Backus, and the song Sunlight will be singing today is Drag Me Down by One Direction. You know, sometimes in our lives we go through struggles, but at the end of the day, God is always there to lift us back up. In the song, the author says, I've got a fire for a heart, and I'm not scared of the dark. This resembles the way that God ignites a flame in our soul and gives us power to conquer anything. In Philippians 4.13, the Apostle Paul tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can be the best versions of ourselves with God's guidance, and God gives us the strength to love ourselves and others the way that God loves us. And now singing are the duettists, Emily Richardson and Olivia Bryant.
Well done. Thank you, Sunlight, for sharing that special music with us this morning. Well, we are in the third and final week of a series of messages uh, focusing on what it means to be good neighbors, uh, to live out that command uh, that Jesus offered when somebody asked him what the greatest commandment was. He said, love God and love your neighbor, that these things are like each other. And so the sweater and the shoes and the chair are a reminder over the last couple of weeks of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, that place where Everybody matters, and everyone is a child who is loved by God. Today, as we bring the series to a a conclusion, uh, I'm going to read a passage that comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and I'm going to read it from the message version uh, because maybe it'll allow us to hear it with fresh ears today, a little bit differently from how you've heard it perhaps in the past. So here we go. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God this generous Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, and breathe life into the words of this servant, that they might carry a word from you into our hearts and lives this morning. Amen. You are the salt of the earth, You are the light of the world. That's perhaps the more familiar way to you of hearing the beginning of that passage. Salt and light. Jesus using these two metaphors in today's passage to describe what is supposed to be the character of our witness. You know, both salt and light have a sensory dimension. Salt has a taste to it and enhances the taste of other things. Light, you can see and experience, and it brings other things into the light and out of the darkness. You can tell when salt or light is present. It makes a difference. Now, the context of this passage today is the Sermon on the Mount, uh, which begins at the beginning of the fifth chapter of Matthew, and contains that compilation of some of Jesus' most important teachings across his ministry. Matthew gives it all to us in bulk form right there in chapters 5 through 7, speaking to a crowd. And in chapter 5, we hear these words about salt and light. You know, the metaphor of light would not have been a new one to the crowd. They were familiar with being told to be light, The people of Israel were God's chosen nation, and twice in Isaiah, in both the 42nd and the 49th chapter, we hear the phrase used that they are to be a light to the nations. And so when Jesus says you are to be light, that's nothing new. Jesus is simply reminding them, calling them to be who they are meant to be in the world. You know, being good neighbors is a tangible way for us to simply be who it is that we are meant to be as followers of Christ in the world today. To be salt and light. To live in such a way that it is noticeable. And clearly from this passage where Jesus talks about salt and light, Jesus is saying that yes, our lives, our witness should be noticeable. 
people should see a difference because of who we are and whose we are. Last week, Catherine mentioned the, the idea of living the questionable life, something that we've talked about on occasion. Uh, it originated with uh, an a priest, Episcopal priest by the name of Michael Frost, but it's living in such a way that at some point, people having encountered your way of being as a follower of Christ would go, I wonder what it is about them that makes them behave that way. Living and speaking and acting in a way that causes people to wonder our behavior as followers of Christ should provoke curiosity. Now, of course, the alternative is for others to see nothing different in our lives because we are Christ followers. And that's not a very good alternative, is it? It is meant to make a difference in the way in which we live. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a Lutheran clergy in Germany in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, puts it this way, to flee into invisibility is to deny the call of discipleship. Any community of Jesus which wants to be invisible is no longer a community that follows him. And knowing who it is that Bonhoeffer is speaking to, uh, we realize that sometimes invisibility can have more damaging consequences than others. Because in his day, the church, much of it, in the nation of Germany was turning a blind eye to the atrocities that were happening through the actions of Hitler and the Third Reich. And Bonhoeffer speaks up, to flee into invisibility is to deny the call of discipleship. Yes, indeed, the character of our lives should cause others in the neighborhood and around us to take notice, it should matter that we say we are Christ followers and people should be able to see and recognize our neighborly attitude toward them. You know, when I think about people that are good neighbors, people that have a neighborly attitude toward others, one person that came to mind immediately for me this past week is a member of our congregation. He usually attends the 11 o'clock service, Mike Smith. Many of you know Mike, and Mike I first met more than 30 years ago when I came here on a Sunday when Catherine and I were dating in college, and Mike was one of the first people, even way back then, to greet me to Trinity and to make sure that I felt welcomed. If you know Mike, you know that that is just the way he is. I don't think Mike has ever met somebody that he didn't think of as a neighbor, right? I mean, it happens around here all the time. He's always out at the front doors welcoming people as they come in and as they leave at the 11 o'clock service. He talks to everyone, and that doesn't just happen here. It happens in his job at Publix. If you run into him at Publix, at Millhopper, he's going to make you feel welcomed and appreciated and valued. That's just the way Mike is. There's something about him that adds flavor to life, right? Salt and light. There should be something different about us because we are followers of Christ. And then Jesus goes on to make sure that we get the rest of the message too, though. We are not salt and light. We're not noticeable for our own sake so that people will point at us and go, wow, look at them. Aren't they great? No, no. The scripture says, We are to be noticeable so that others will recognize in us something of who God is and that ultimately the glory will go back to God. Which makes Jesus' choice of metaphors in this passage just perfect. Not surprising, I know, that Jesus would use perfect metaphors. But salt and light are just right because Have you noticed that salt and light are never for their own benefit? Where salt and light show up, it's never to draw attention to themselves. Salt is meant to enhance the flavor of other things, of foods. Light is for the benefit of enhancing sight. And when either salt or light 
is used in such a way that it becomes about itself, it's not such a great experience usually, right? I mean, when salt draws attention to itself in food, it has been overused. It masks the flavors that it was intended to enhance. And when light draws attention to itself, it usually hurts our eyes. And it keeps us from seeing what it is meant to illuminate. And so Jesus, at the end of this passage today, says, Let your light shine, yes, but let it shine in such a way that your good works point to your Father in heaven. Let your light shine in such a way that it doesn't focus on you. It allows people to focus on the one who really matters, the God who loves us all. So our children's ministry team created an opportunity just for all of us today to be able to let a little light shine to our neighbors. You know, many of you, that our property borders the property of Talbot Elementary School. And there are ways in which we have been neighborly with one another for quite some time now. And our children's ministry team was thinking as we were preparing for the beginning of another school year of how we might um, expand that neighborliness. What else we might do to let our friends and neighbors at Talbot know that we care about them? So when you leave worship this morning, you're going to notice a table out front. And on that table are some envelopes and blank note cards. And every one of those note cards has a name attached to it. It's the name of one of the staff members over at Talbot. And our invitation to you is to take one of those note cards today and to take it home and write and to write a note of appreciation and encouragement to that person whose name you receive. You all know, you've had the experience of receiving a note from someone and sometimes it came at just the right moment, at a time when you really needed a word of encouragement or hope or comfort. So just think about what that might do for somebody as they are starting a new school year to hear from their neighbors that we're thinking about them, we are praying for them, and we care about them. This week, the invitation is for all of us to let our light shine just a little bit by caring for our Trinity neighbor, the folks over at Talbot. Salt and light living in such a way that our lives make a difference and that our lives point to the one whom we serve and the one whom we follow. Now, let's be honest. As we seek to be salt and light in our neighborhoods and in our community, it will not always be easy, right? Catherine mentioned last week that neighbor that perhaps we've all had at some times who makes good neighboring difficult. And perhaps our neighbors sometimes feel the same about us as well, if we're honest, right? We're not always the easiest to get along with either. So a couple of words of encouragement, perhaps even warning, as we continue to dive into this neighboring. The first is being salt and light should not be dependent on our neighbor's good behavior. We don't get to wait for our neighbor to behave the way that we want them to behave and then decide, okay, since you've done this, then then I'm going to be nice to you too. No, our job is to be salt and light regardless of how our neighbor treats us, to live in such a way that we bear witness to the one whom we follow Just remember the context in Matthew 5 of our passage today. Right before Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, he has gone through the Beatitudes, the blessings. And the last Beatitude, do you remember? It says, blessed are you when people persecute you 
and say all sorts of terrible things about you. And then he launches from that into this call for us to be salt and light. The witness that we bear is not to be dependent on what we receive from others around us. In her book, Grounded, Finding God in the World, Diana Butler Bass tells a story from her childhood that she refers to as the great tree slaughter. You see, she and her family lived in a neighborhood beside her aunt and uncle and their family who lived beside another neighbor who was not a family member, but someone who, with whom they had had good relationships for a long time. But one morning, she and her family members and some other neighbors heard this terrible commotion, and they walked outside and they gathered outside the driveway of, their, of her aunt and uncle and looked up to find her cousin in the tree of the neighbor chopping away, slaughtering limbs and branches of the tree that hung over the aunt and uncle's driveway. It appears that the problem was that this was a fruit-bearing tree, and the uncle got tired of the fruit splatting in his driveway and causing it to become stained and having to work to try to get that off every year. And so he instructed his son to do something about it. And the son took the chainsaw and started hacking limbs off of the neighbor's tree. Well, you can imagine that didn't go so well. And Diana tells this story to then talk about how her mother used it as an opportunity to talk to her about being a good neighbor and how that is a call on our lives as followers of Christ, that we should treat our neighbor as we would want to be treated ourselves. And she called out her brother and sister-in-law in the process for not being a good neighbor. Well, part of the fallout of that encounter was that that relationship was destroyed. Nobody spoke to each other anymore after that, and the neighbor with the fruit tree not only held a grudge against the aunt and uncle, but as a result of that encounter, stopped making fruit pies to provide to the whole neighborhood that had been a year-after-year year tradition. Which made me wonder, as I thought about being salt and light, what if instead that neighbor had just kept right on making fruit pies and giving them to everybody in the neighborhood? I wonder what would have happened if somebody in that situation had been willing to act like salt and light, had acted in a way that was noticeable and offered a different kind of witness in the circumstances. If we're going to be good neighbors, we're going to have to face some occasions when it is not easy and we are even going to have to practice the art of forgiving. The authors of the book, The Art of Neighboring, tell a story about a man named Pete who, along with his wife, had become frustrated with a neighbor who had a dog that barked incessantly. Now, this was particularly troubling to Pete and his wife because they had a child who was very young, and it seemed that the prime time for the dog barking its loudest were those times when they were trying to make sure that the child could sleep. Anybody been there? You know how exasperating it can be when you've finally gotten a child to sleep and then something wakes them up. And this was happening over and over again. And so finally one day Pete decided he was going to have to talk to his neighbor about this. And so he made the trek over to his neighbor's house, and the conversation did not go well. The neighbor got defensive. Pete got his hackles up. They didn't really have a good conversation about it. They both raised their voices and their tempers. 
And at best, they merely agreed to disagree, and nothing changed. Pete and his wife continued to be frustrated. The man's dog continued to bark incessantly. Until one day, a couple of months later, something sparked Pete to try a different approach. It was winter, and the first snow had fallen, and Pete had gone out into his driveway to shovel the snow off of his driveway, and he noticed that his neighbor hadn't had a chance to do that yet. And something nudged him when he was done with his own driveway to go and do the same thing for his neighbor's driveway. And Pete said that right as he was about to be finished shoveling this neighbor's driveway, that the front door of the house opened and a man came walking outside who he didn't recognize and he introduced himself to Pete as the neighbor's brother and he said, thank you so much for doing that. You know, my brother was recently diagnosed with cancer and he couldn't have possibly come out to do this work and you have helped us all so much by your kindness. Pete says, the dog didn't necessarily stop barking after that, but all of a sudden the barking dog really didn't matter so much anymore. When he realized that the neighbor had a lot more important, a lot more serious things going on, it was as if he couldn't even hear the dog anymore. Being a good neighbor is about being salt and light, even at those times when life around us and neighbors around us can be exasperating. Because being a good neighbor is meant to make a difference, not only for our neighbors, but also in our own hearts and lives. And the reality is there will be good days and there will be bad ones. I hope there are a lot more good days than there are bad ones in your practice of neighboring. But no matter what, my encouragement to you is to never give up, to not lose heart in seeking to live out the call to be a good neighbor. Cal Ripken, one of the all-time greats in Major League Baseball, Hall of Famer, who in 1988, after having already played professionally for several years, by that time had accumulated about a thousand games consecutively where he had not missed a game. In 1988, the Baltimore Orioles, the team that he played for, won 54 games and lost 107. That's a pretty rotten year for a Major League Baseball team. Imagine if at the end of that year, Cal Ripken had said, you know what, me showing up to do this every day really doesn't matter. Look at how terrible the season's been. I think I'll just take some time off. But he didn't. And by the end of Cal Ripken's career, he had set a record for the most consecutive games played of any major leaguer ever, a record that most experts say will never be broken, 2,600-plus games in a row. Why do I say that to you? To say this, when it comes to being a good neighbor, stay in the game. As a follower of Christ, meant to be salt and light for others around you. Stay in the game. Be consistent and be persistent in living the life God calls you to. Do not be insistent. Don't be insistent that your neighbor be like you. Don't be insistent that at some point your neighbor turns to the same faith that you have. Be, in, be consistent and persistent because of the faith that you have and because who you follow. At the end of the day, to be salt and light is to treat our neighborhoods 
as if they really do matter. They are one of the gifts that God has given us and a place to shine the light of God's love. Diana Butler Bass puts it this way, we might neglect or forget this, but the congregation of our lives with those nearby, isn't that interesting that she uses that word congregation? The gathering of our lives with those around us in our communities is sacred. It is a human geography in a spiritual habitat to remember and to reconnect with our neighbors and neighborhoods is a life-giving, sane, and humane way to live. You know, it really is a beautiful day for a neighbor. You pray with me. Oh God, it is you who have given us communities within which to live. You who have called us to bear witness in the ways we are neighbors. Help us to love ours, to be salt and light. For the sake of your glory and for the well-being of us all. Amen. Steve spoke of staying in the game, and this table is meant to help us do just that. I think Jesus knew that if we went out into the world and lived out our faith in real time with real people, that we were going to need a means of grace that helped us when our salt feels less salty than it should be and our light feels like it's waning. Especially when those things are happening because we've been wounded by something someone has said or been hurt by something someone has done. And when we are struggling to forgive that person, whether it's somebody in our neighborhood or somebody in our home or somebody in our community of faith or in our workplace, it impedes our ability to be salt and light like we were created to be. And so we come to a table where we are reminded that Christ gave himself for us. And that on the cross, he cried out, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. When we remember what Christ did for us, and we are reminded of the grace and forgiveness that we have received when we didn't know what we were doing, it enables us, maybe not immediately, but it enables us and strengthens us to be able to do the same for someone else to be able to say, God, help me forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Help me forgive them because maybe I don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And so Jesus took bread and gave thanks to the Father and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks to the Father and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and drink. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on each of us gathered here and on this bread and on this juice that it may be for us the body and blood of Christ that makes us the redeemed, those who have been forgiven and live as such as the body of Christ in the world. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world until you come again in final victory. Lord, as we come today to this table, some of us, need this means of grace 
to rekindle within us that which you have given us, the gift to be salt and light. And some of us are struggling to forgive. And so as we receive and are reminded of the forgiveness you have offered to us, may this become the nourishment we need to offer forgiveness to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to invite those who are gonna come and serve with us to go ahead and come forward now. And as they are coming forward and preparing the elements, I just wanna share with you that in United Methodist Church, especially here at Trinity, Everyone is welcome at the table. Everyone is welcome. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church. You simply need to respond to the Holy Spirit at work within your life and want to come and receive what Christ has for you today. Whatever it is you need, Christ is saying, come and receive my grace. And so we're gonna invite you to do that by starting with the beginning rows in each section and then make your way to the back rows, exit to the left, and come forward to a pair of servers that are in front of you. They'll tear off a piece of bread and hand it to you. You can put your cups, your hands in a cup position as to receive God's grace. And then take that bread and dip it into the juice and then you can eat it. You're welcome to come and kneel and to pray or you can return by the right side of your section to sing along with the band or just to listen and meditate. If you need gluten-free, we have that. It's on the two outer edges. We'll be happy to serve you. Just let us know. Looks like all is ready. Come and receive what God has for you. Stars are made to worship so. Oh. 
pray with me? God, you do chase us down, and thank you for it. Thank you for the gift of this meal. Having tasted and seen your loving kindness and experienced your forgiveness, help us now, Lord, to go be the salt and light that you created us to be. Help us to love our neighbor as you have loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. So why don't we stand and sing the best example of being the light of the world that we can, this little light of mine. So three things as you go today. Uh, one, visit the area under the oak tree where you'll be able to see the work that those young men over at Faith Mission have done and perhaps even put a bid in on one of the pieces. Two, pick up a note card and spread a little light and a little bit of love with our staff next door at Talbot Elementary School this week. And three, as you walk out, an usher would be glad to give you one of these fridge magnet boards with an opportunity for you to continue to work on getting to know your neighbors and write them down in the houses around yours. You are here. Here are all your neighbors. Keep getting to know them, my friends, and let your light shine in such a way that they will see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen.